friends, and welcome to another video. Today, I'm gonna be dressing like we did 50 years ago, in 1967. 1967 was the year that brought us the Summer of Love, Disney's The Jungle Book, the first successful human heart transplant, and the births of Vin Diesel, Julia Roberts, and Rolling Stone magazine. From the mamas to the papas, 1967 was a year of looking for Lucy in the sky with diamonds and getting seduced by Mrs. Robinson. While Jimi Hendrix was setting his guitar on fire, thousands of people marched on Washington to try and literally lift the Pentagon building with their minds. Yes, that actually happened. In regards to what we were wearing, it was a year of short skirts, Nehru jackets, clear plastic clothing, and flowers in your hair. As for hairstyles, 60s hair was all over the map. Some of it was long and unkempt, some of it was super short, and some of it was quaffed into gravity-defying modern art pieces. So once again, I recruited my friend Kaylee Melissa, a hairstylist and YouTuber, to aid me in my quest to become a far-out 60s chick. So with some assistance, and after consulting a few magazines, sewing patterns, a little bit of Mad Men, and my dad, I think I've managed to put together three outfits that represent some of the iconic styles of the time. As always, I'm going to be focusing mostly on American style, though for this video, I feel like it's impossible to ignore the British influences on 60s fashion. Yeah, baby! <laughs> so, 1967, what happened and what we wore. So for my first outfit, I went for this mod mini dress ensemble. Fixing your buttons? Uh, fixing my tights. My tights oh, are pretty far up. That's how high they are? <laughs> This look was inspired by 1960s icons like Twiggy, Jean Shrimpton, Goldie Hawn, and these girls in the background of the Austin Powers intro sequence. Groovy, baby! Oh my god. <laughs> a key piece of the swinging 60s was the miniskirt, a controversial fashion statement that spread like wildfire, ruffling the feathers of famed designers like Coco Chanel, who said it was just awful, as well as fans of traditional fashion everywhere. Fi! What? What's that? I've never heard of that before. Yes, that's what's above your knees. What, Sharon? No! Skirts and dresses in the 50s were usually full and hit at the knee, and mini skirts were only really seen in sci-fi movies, giving the mini, when it was popularized in the 60s, a futuristic appeal. It's kind of weird to think about thighs being innovative because I feel like I've been wearing minis my whole life, but you know, here we go. Thigh. So for this outfit, I chose a green mini dress with buttons down the front, ivory colored stockings, black Mary Jane shoes, a black plastic handbag, and this giant green bangle. This is the greenest you've ever been. I love how I like kind of came to this park to be like, oh, I'll match, but I'm like way more neon than the grass. <laughs> This mod style of bright colors, short cuts, and geometric shapes had become pretty widespread the year earlier in 1966. You keep on trying to have like a shocked look on your face. I don't know, I feel like that's the pose. Yeah. Like you're supposed to be like, oh! When style icon and model Twiggy erupted onto the fashion scene. Oh, I'm Twiggy, <laughs> but with a lot of a bigger butt. I'm Thicky. T-H-I-C-C-Y. <laughs> But before mod was a style, it was also a subculture. The mod, short for modernist scene, originated in British jazz clubs in the late 50s. Post-war England was seeing good economic times, and young people had extra pocket change, which they spent on high-end clothes, new records, and decked out Vespa scooters. Mods congregated in 24-hour coffee bars to listen and dance to jazz music. A coffee bar. Let's go in. Powered by caffeine, amongst other things. Where is the jukebox? Well, it's not in the pretzel section. What is kale? Is kale a new instrument from India? However, whether it was the Twiggy board games or lunchboxes, by 1967, as many people flocked to the mod style, most of the original mods tired of the mainstream attention and moved on. So mod turned from a noun to an adjective, from the mods to mod style. Once you've made the JCPenney and Spiegel catalog, you're pretty mainstream. For my hair, we went with this bangs and slight poof style. I feel like mod was all about like the shapes and the lines, so we're basically creating shapes and lines with your hair. Hair architecture, that's what this is. Yes. 1967 was a transition year in many ways, and for hair, I think we were caught between the hair sprayed to death flip of the earlier 60s and the free flowing locks of the 70s. I hope I didn't mess up my bangs too much. I promised Kaylee I wouldn't touch them, but 
I feel like I've been touching them. And for my makeup, I went with pale eyeshadow, a black cat eye wing, a twiggy inspired cut crease line, twice as much flight power, and nude lipstick. I think white lipstick was also in, but a pale, pale nude was a popular choice. Mod style was revived in the 1980s and in the 2000s, and though I feel like muted nude and dark colors are more in style than bright neons nowadays, mod fashion is so iconic that it tends to pop up regularly. Do I look swinging? As long as you don't hit the camera. Swinging 60s. <laughs> swinging <laughs> <see>? my bag. <laughs> Oh, wow. That's a weapon. So for my next look, I rode the fashion pendulum all the way down to the ground with this body skimming maxi dress. I call this outfit the lengthy lady, maxi mama. Ooh. For this outfit, I paired this long purple pattern dress with silver bangles, shoes, a silver handbag, and these large bluish pearly earrings. You look like you've been encased in like a rhinestone for 40 years. And I've just popped out. 50 years. While the earth Early and mid 60s brought with them the miniskirt. The end of the decade brought a completely opposite silhouette into the picture. Long, uncinched dresses in a loose, almost nightgown esque style were all over the fashion magazines that I found from 1967. Gone were the girdles of the 50s. In fact, the less you could see of the waist, the better. I'm trying to stand up as straight as possible because there's no shape to the dress, so I'm like, I must have shoulders like a hanger. This fashion one. 80 bucked the trend of hemlines getting progressively shorter with time, as dresses hadn't been this long since World War I. I think like the maxiness of the dress is also applying to your dramaticness. More f Excuse you. <laughs> In general, these looks were inspired by international designs, like the kaftan from the Middle East and North Africa, and the Nehru collar and paisley pattern from India. I feel like it's hard to really like pinpoint who exactly this girl is. She's kind of just like a fashion forward adult woman. You look like a penguin. You could be at home, you could be at a house party, you could be out working, you could be jet setting, vacationing, lunching. It's a lot of different opportunities to wear this dress. Augmented by some highly publicized celebrity trips to South Asia in the late 60s, international air travel as a whole was perceived as glam and luxurious. And if you were going somewhere exotic, that also meant dressing the part. Is you, this an appropriate moment for the transatlantic accent? It might be. Hello, friend. Oh my god. And welcome to another video. I just immediately regretted that. And even if you weren't going anywhere, maybe you also wanted to join in on the fun. Look, Tyler. Diamonds. Oh my god. So designers, like Emilio Pucci, created looks that channeled that jet-setting fantasy. That's total CZ. <laughs> this? Yeah. Don't worry, this is plastic. <laughs> this dress in particular was my grandmother's from India. Her brother, who lived in the US, sent her the fabric and she had it sewn into this dress. So not necessarily internationally inspired, but literally international. Also, secret pocket. Ooh. For my hair, we went with a structured updo with this braid detail. And we both spent a lot of time looking through images last night, and we agreed that the Ariana Grande silhouette was very popular. It seems like abstract, somewhat impractical styles with strategic baubles and lots of volume were favored to complement these loose maxi dresses. Though in the 60s, these would have been achieved with hair clip-ons known as wiglets. For this look, Kaylee just used some hair extensions to give my head helmet some body. You've got like a second head back here. I'm a little bit like Professor Quirrell. Yeah, it's also like your second head has like a Will Byers haircut. <laughs> For my makeup, I chose a pale blue eyeshadow and black cat eye liner. And once again, a very muted lip color. I think in general for 60s makeup, you needed like some serious eyeliner and some very, very light lipstick gloss something. It's almost like the 2007 uh, concealer lip. This dress made me feel and act a little bit over the top. I think I was trying to channel good old Liz Taylor. Oh, I've married four, 45 men and kept all the jewels. <laughs> <laughs> That's my impression of Elizabeth Taylor. It, it was accurate. Who, coincidentally, gathered quite the caftan collection during her life. Maxis mostly replaced the miniskirt silhouette in the 70s, and also had a stint of popularity in the 90s, a la Phoebe Buffet. I personally love maxi skirts because I don't have to shave my legs to wear them, but I'm not sure how long I would truly last inside of that hair helmet. It was pretty hard. 
So for my third outfit, I went for a hippie-inspired summer of lovin' look. Look at my bush. Look how big it is. The hippie movement was born in Northern California in the mid-1960s, made up of people who sought alternative ways to perceive the world and build society. I am a blade of grass, swaying in the wind. That's like a 1960s version of firework. At times, or most of the time, encouraged by mind-altering and psychedelic substances. Do you ever feel like a blade of grass getting plucked into someone else's joint? Diametrically opposed to the establishment and the escalation of the Vietnam War, the movement laced music, politics, drug use, and philosophy into a distinct culture ready to explode by 1967. See, I'm trying to do some moves that I think would be appropriate. I think I just look a little bit like a mom at Coachella. I kind of call it like um, massaging curtains. <laughs> Though LSD was banned in the US in October 1966, hippies paid that pretty much no mind and continue to congregate and take psychedelics pretty brazenly. I'm just hugging this tree. Nothing to see here, just an act of love. On the backs of popular musicians such as Jefferson Airplane, The Grateful Dead, and Jimi Hendrix, the growth of psychedelic culture spread nationwide and reached the mainstream with the Summer of Love in San Francisco, where hundreds of thousands gathered to demonstrate their alignment with the hippie philosophy. Are you dog circling right now? I'm nesting. I mean, I, I hate to break it to you, that patch right there might be from like dog piss, but you know. Let me just nest slightly to the left then. <laughs> this outfit includes a paisley patterned orange mini dress, a plain knitted bag, brown gladiator sandals, lots of beaded necklaces, these circle lensed wire rimmed sunglasses, and an orange headband. I also went with pretty natural makeup and very, very long hair. I almost feel like I shouldn't even be wearing clothes. Like I should just be wearing hair. Just cover my boobs with the hair and then just keep going. Is that the plot of the musical hair? It might be. This look overall was inspired by a few celebrities associated with the counterculture movement, like Michelle Phillips of the Mamas and the Papas, Janis Joplin, Cher, and Patti Boyd, Beatle George Harrison's wife. And to really finish off the look, we did need a little George Harrison. Peace and love, peace and love. I'm a Beatle. What's that accent? From Liverpool. <laughs> Tyler's look is inspired directly from George's outfit here, which includes a white shirt, denim jacket, pendant necklace, paisley pants, brown shoes, heart-shaped wire-rimmed sunglasses, and a nice thick moustache. Have you seen Paul and Ringo? I think they're hiding in your moustache, Ty. Well, I'm hiding from Yoko. As pretty much the biggest band in the world, the Beatles brought a lot of attention to psychedelic culture. I am the Eggman. I am the walrus, cuckoo cuckoo. Talking openly about their experimentation and how it influenced their music, particularly their 67 album, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. <laughs> She's very easy to entertain. She's like, he's killing it. <laughs> People are walking by her like, he's not very good. <laughs> Though neither of us are wearing flowers, another name for hippie was Flower Child, as the flower held a strong significance for the movement. You bought them those flowers? Yes. All of their names are Susan. Oftentimes worn in the hair, like the now Snapchat famous flower crown. The, the flowers fit very nicely on my headband which I like. The item's meaning expanded in October of 67, when after attempts to levitate the Pentagon failed, hippies filled the barrels of soldiers' rifles with flowers, and flower power as a form of peaceful protest was born. Of course, the real hippies didn't have this, but... Hey, oh, I got the flower crown now, that looks good. Okay. This look to me feels kind of like a meme outfit of what a hippie would wear. I think that things like paisley patterns and long hair and headbands were so widespread that nowadays this almost looks like a hippie costume. But hey, you know, the meme had to come from somewhere. In general though, the mantra for hippies was that you should dress like your own fantasy. So a lot of people wore whatever they wanted, from jeans and t-shirts to absolutely nothing. You know, it's just, it's more, it's free form. Don't let the man tell you what to wear. There, man. Look, this is where they stock the wood. It's Woodstock. Oh my god. We drove all the way here for that one line. <laughs> all right, let's go. 
So those were my 1967 outfits. Overall, it was really fun trying to style looks around the 1967 aesthetic. I think the 60s are a very iconic decade, and a lot of the styles have been revived many times over, and almost never seem to go fully out of fashion. If I were gonna bring anything back from 67, it would be the mod hair, the caftans, and Tyler's mustache. So thank you guys so much for sticking around for an entire half century of outfits this year. From the 2000s to the 60s, it seems like a lot of things have come in and out of style, and the fashion pendulum has swung from one end to the other and back again. I hope you enjoyed this little mini dive into 50 years of fashion history. Once again, a big thank you to Kaylee Melissa for constructing me a hard hat out of hair, and I've linked her channel below so you guys can check it out. Thank you so much for watching. If you like that video, make sure to smash that like button, and if you want to see more videos like this, make sure to smash that subscribe button. A big shout out to IDK for watching. Thanks for watching IDK, and I will see you guys a next year.